What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a variant discussion video. I received in the mail in the last couple of days a couple of really nice UKG graded examples. One, a Dangar, and one is a No COO Tuscan Raider. And we'll take a look at those in detail in a little while. Before I did, I did that, though, I wanted to show you guys just some general information about these two figures that I found online, some other variants that are out there, some photos, things like that, that I thought were worth showing you. Uh, first, this website is called the Vintage Action Figure Variation Guide. It's got kind of a weird website name, hiasakoit.co.uk. So it's not easy to, uh, to, to find it, but if you type in Star Wars Vintage Variants on Google, along with the character name, it pops right up. And I'll put a link for everything that I'm showing you in this video in the video description. Uh, but this, uh, the other thing I'll mention about this website is it's, it's not complete. They don't tend to have a lot of the uh, foreign variants like Lily Letty or Spanish Pox and PVPs, but it's a good starting point. It's a good starting point. And I wanted to at least show you guys a few different Dengars that are out there. And I've got a couple of uh, really nice Dengars that are graded. One of them is AFA graded. <clears throat> the other one is, as I mentioned, the UKG graded example that I picked up on Facebook. But, uh, you know, here's here's some, some looks at the different figures. Uh, there's basically a Hong Kong COO with different colors to the, the face as well as the armor. There's also a no COO or COO removed variation. And then there's the Spanish PBP variant. And there can be different variations based on <clears throat> the color of the face, as I mentioned, and the, the armor. And, uh, you know, there's also different slight variations to the colors of the backpack, as you can see here. And uh, the armor is, is the most notable thing. So let's take a look at a few photos. This photo shows the Hong Kong with the darker skin. This is a no COO with kind of like a mid-range flesh face tone. And that's, I think that's the one I have. And then the one that's labeled COO removed with very pale skin, that would be your Spanish PVP variant. That would be like the SCAR variant. And uh, it, it was made in Spain after the merger between the POC and PVP factories. They started to manufacture and assemble and paint their own figures in Spain. And uh, that just gives you a, a good look at, at three of the different colors. Now, there are some other color variations. There's like a really dark lemonish kind of yellow. There's like an egg yolk kind of color to, to the face. But, uh, you know, th this gives you a good starting point for some of the different color variations for the face. The other thing I'll point out is the armor. Uh, you can have a Hong Kong with this same kind of dark purple armor. There's also kind of more of a brownish tone to the armor. And there's also glossy versus matte finish to the paint. The other interesting thing is that I found on Rubble Scum is that you can have different colors between the limbs and the chest and the torso piece. So you can have like a really purplish kind of chest piece, but the arms could be uh, a lighter, a lighter uh, purple color or brownish kind of purple. There's also like glossy versus matte and combinations thereof. So you, you just got to see what you got. And, you know, one, one guy counted like 11 different variations that he had. And I don't know how far down the rabbit hole you can really go. And I don't know how far AFA and UKG and all these guys, they really dig into that on the label. But at least wanted to show you some of the different color variations that are out there. Um, next, really quickly, let's talk about the Tuscan Raider. We already covered the Tuscan Raider in a first 12 figure focus video. And again, I'll put a link to that in the video description in case you missed it. The, the essential thing to keep in mind for the Tuscan Raider is that there is a Hong Kong, there's a no COO, probably made in Europe. There's also a Spanish POC figure. And then there can be variations for the Hong Kong figure based on the face whether they're hollow eye tubes on the cheeks, they can be long eye tubes on the cheeks, and then also there's different paint variations. You can have a light brown, as you can see here for the bandoliers, or a dark brown color. And uh, those were found on early card backs all the way to later card backs. And there can also be combinations of dark gloves with the letter brown bandolier. And uh, here's a close up here that shows the dark straps with the dark hands. All of these, by the way, are Hong Kong COOs. So there can be quite a bit of variation um, just depending on which factory and probably even which day these were manufactured. But uh, it's, it does seem that the very dark brown paint applications that is labeled on the AFA label, and I'll show you that here in a second, those tended to come 
on the later card backs, Return of the Jedi card backs, things like that. Uh, but I, every one of these is a Hong Kong COO, country of origin. And, uh, you know, you can see just the massive difference in the pr in the, the colors of the paint used for the bandoliers that goes around the chest, as well as the hands and uh, all kinds of different combinations thereof. Uh, finally, uh, I just wanted to do one quick close up here. And you can see, again, just how much variation there is between the, the, the bandolier color as well as the glove color. And, you know... Beyond that, though, there is the no COO, which I did just pick up. And this one's a very difficult one to find. Um, they were pr most likely, I would guess, manufactured probably either in the Palator or the Meccano factories. Uh, but this is a close-up of what that looks like. Just in the event that when I show you my example, um, it doesn't come through very clearly on the camera. I at least wanted to show you a nice zoom in of the no COO. And you can see there's a little bit of remnant right there probably from where it said Hong Kong, but it was filled in with putty in the actual molds used to create the limbs. And uh, so all it, all it says on the no CO is GMFGI 1977, but where it did say Hong Kong, uh, that's no longer there. <clears throat> but keep in mind that the no COO version for the Sand People or Tuscan Raider is different than a Spanish POC. The Spanish POC figure used Hong Kong parts, but they were assembled and painted in Spain in the POC factory, an early Spanish figure. So uh, those are, are noted to have uh, very strange paint variations, a lot of bubbling on the paint and uh, weak sonic welds, lots of overspray on the gloves and onto the wrists and forearms. Uh, I don't have one of those, but I do have the no COO. And I do have two different variations for the Hong Kong that I'll show you now along with my new Dengar pickup. So now that you got that quick introduction to some of the different variants that are out there for Dengar and the Tuscan Raider, um, I'm going to show you the two that arrived this week. And uh, before I show you the first Dengar, this is one that's been in my collection for a while. It is an AFA 85 no COO version. And so this has got a little bit lighter color purple to the armor. Uh, it is uniform, so the arms and the legs do match the chest apparatus. Um, as I mentioned, there are some where it's a different color shade depending on who made it and when they were manufactured, things like that. Uh, this one also has kind of like a deep, darker peach color to the face. There is also a lighter peach color to the face as well as a kind of a lemon yellow version. But uh, this is most likely made in like the Meccano or Palatoy factory, somewhere in Europe is my guess. But it's a smoothed out, no COO, graded AFA 85, and you can see the label there. AFA 85, no COO. That's what the two dashes mean there for those new two graded action figures. And before I show you the next one, I wanted to read this note from the seller. I found this one on Facebook. This is the Spanish pale face, dark purple armor Dengar. Let me see if we can get a better focus there. And you can see how much uh, darker that color is to the armor. Uh, both on the arms and legs as well as the chest. It's a much darker, deeper, richer purple color than the no COO version. And his face also is very pale. And uh, the seller, Adam Barry, who I found, uh, I found his ad on Facebook in one of the groups, uh, he sold this to me and he says, hi, he included a note here. He says, hi, John, thank you for purchasing my item. It is a great figure. Just want to say thank you for the content you make. I enjoy it and watch all videos. I only started collecting vintage Kenner three years ago and TVC approximately one year ago. Me too, Adam. Your videos have been a great source. So a big thank you. Take care and may the force be with you. Yours, Adam. So Adam, thank you for the nice note and for the great deal Fast shipping on this Spanish PBP Dengar. And this has this features the brand new laser cut cases with the awesome accessory case for the weapon. It's the big heavy weapon that he's known for. It's much better than the older cases where they just taped it to the side. And in my opinion, UKG is better with the accessories than both AFA and CAS with larger weapons because AFA and CAS only use brackets and I hate the brackets. I'm an anti-bracketite. Stop using the brackets, guys. This is the way it should be displayed with this recessed accessory case. It looks so much better this way. And props to UKG for not caving to the bracket fans and doing it right. This is the way it should be done for all weapons, in my opinion. But this is the deep, dark purple armor Spanish PBP 
Dengar. And uh, this is graded 80% by UKG. Uh, the figure got an 80%. The paint got an 80%. No COO, purple armor, Dengar, white face, PBP. So perfectly labeled, which is the other thing I love about UKG. I feel like their labels are the best and their accessory cases are easily the best. But you can see just how much different it is. I mean, it's just a massive difference in the the deep richness of that purple. Now, in my opinion, if this was graded by AFA, it would have gotten a 75. Because as is, is notable for most Spanish figures, uh, there's a lot of discoloration around the wrist area as well as over by the shoulder. It's just a common problem with these Spanish figures. When the PBP factory started manufacturing their own parts, and painting and assembling their own parts they just it was it was just not quite up to snuff compared to uh the hong kong factories and so as a result the plastics used degrade they call it, there's a lot of modeling that can go on with both the pox and the pbps and the paint overspray the paint doesn't stay on well so I, my gut says that if afa graded this it would probably get a 75. now all that being said i don't care this is just a great figure i, I love having it i'm not criticizing the figure or the grading you know ukg and cas tend to grade about a half a point lower anyway so this would probably be like a 75 or 75 plus with afa but that's okay that's okay it just looks fantastic uh and thank you again adam for the fantastic deal it was a very very fair price i've been trying to find an 85 grade pbp dangar but good luck it's just really it's really hard to do it's really hard to do because pbp figures in general just are, are tough to find in high grade and then the other one i'm going to show you is to my tuscan raider collection first i've got two unarticulated 1985 ish polish bootlegs uh, these are both considered green by the polish bootleg expert jacob Przinski. he said that this is not in fact blue this is like a deep emerald green and then this would be like your, I guess, forest green. Uh, they both sport gold paint applications for the face, the bandolier, as well as the gloves. But really nice. Uh, one of them is graded 80%. One of them is graded 70 plus percent. But very, very cool to have a couple of Polish bootleg Tuscan Raiders from about 1985. And then the other ones I have... Uh, already in my collection are two AFA 85s and you can see how much darker and deeper the paint is on the gloves as well as the bandolier and face for this Hong Kong version versus this Hong Kong version and as we saw in the guide there can be combinations with dark gloves but the lighter brown bandolier these are uniform though these have the light brown which is the more common and more typical and then as we went a little bit later on during the during the heyday of the toy line they they did the factories did start using a little bit darker deeper paint color for the bandoliers and gloves and you can see this is labeled dark brown paint afa 85 hong kong versus just the regular sand people graded 85 uh, hong kong so a couple of really nice examples there that i've had in my collection for a little bit but here's the new one this is a very very difficult variation to find this is the no coo version and as you can see the paint color is even darker than the dark brown paint hong kong it's it's a very very dark color so i'll let you take a look at that it's almost like a black really it looks almost black but it is darker it is, it is a darker color to it and uh, so we got the regular hong kong with the light brown paint we've got the dark brown paint hong kong and now the no coo but i can tell you that the no coo version is very very difficult to find it's not the most valuable the most valuable would be the ones with the long eye tubes there there is one with kind of longer eye tubes than what you see here and uh the, the what i'll note is that the eye tubes for the no coo are are the long eye tubes you know it, the, the 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 hong kongs that i have here have as you can see here have very very short eye tubes you can see how short that is versus the long eye tubes on this one but there is a long eye tubes hong kong so uh, the long eye tubes hong kong would be very similar to this one and then obviously the most expensive would be your hollow cheeks we've documented a number of examples on the channel that have sold on ebay loose graded four to eight hundred dollars depending on the grade but uh in my opinion, this one is harder to find than the Hollow Cheeks, but the Hollow Cheeks gets all the love and all the press and all the demand from collectors. So, But if you can find a no COO uh, Tuscan Raider, I, I would guess that this probably appeared on the Tri-Logo Palatoy, uh, maybe on Palatoy, straight Palatoy card backs. 
Uh, the Palatoy Trilogo Tuscan Raider is pretty tough to find. That's a, that's a very tough one to find. But uh, here's the grading label on this one. Uh, the figure got an 85%. The cape got an 85%. The paint got a 75% for an overall 80, and it's labeled the no COO. I think the main reason it got the 75 is that the horns uh, have paint loss. You know, it's missing a lot of the silver paint. Uh, you can see a lot of the paint is missing there on those eye tubes. So we get a closer look. Or, excuse me, on the on the horns to his head. But look how long those eye tubes are versus the Hong Kong. Now, hopefully that's coming through. Okay, so you can see the Hong Kong short eye tubes or regular eye tubes versus the long. So I, that's one thing I did not know about the No COO Tuscan Raider when I bought this is that it it sports the longer eye tubes. But it's not labeled as such since, I, you know, to my knowledge, all no COOs use the same mold. And then, again, that's different than the Spanish POC figure. The Spanish POC figure has a Hong Kong COO. This is a true smoothed out no COO. But it's nice to have a few variations. I think that, you know, next on my list would be the long eye tubes Hong Kong as well as the hollow cheeks. But going to have to spend some money for those two, I think, if you want to get those in high grade. But uh, but I'm very, very happy to get the no COO because this one is, uh, it just does not come up graded very often. And when I saw this come up for a fair price over on eBay UK, I did not hesitate. Global shipping program and all, I did not hesitate. I pulled the trigger and I'm very, very happy to have it. But overall, the paint on it is just really great. So I, the only thing I can think of for getting that 75 subgrade is because of the uh, the eye tubes. Um, or excuse me, the, the, the head horns, head horns. I keep saying eye tubes. Uh, one final note, I wanted to take a quick look that I hadn't talked about is the difference in the paint apps for the backpack. On these, the backpack color is pretty similar, but you can find some Hong Kongs that have a much lighter brown color to the paint applications on the backpack. But these two are very, very similar, which is interesting given how different the purple armor is. I mean, that is just a massive difference in the Dengar armor between the no COO made in Europe versus the Spanish PBP made in the PBP factory in Spain. Anyway, I also included a little slideshow uh, at the end of this video. And uh, for, for if you want a, a, a better look at, at these two figures. And thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon.